So some new things. Um, we're building a configurator on Helderberg.com. And this, uh, while it doesn't show you colors per se, because I honestly think the configurators that show you the colors look kind of cartoonish, but what it will do is it will allow you to see all the various options that are available when you're building a bespoke defender. Um, one of the things that will be in this configurator, I mean, of course, we're going to talk about wheels, tires, lip kit, bumpers, headlights. Uh, it's going to mention colors and talk about the various colors, but it's going to be more of a resource. So you can say, uh, or you can go into it and I give you some guidance and advice. If you do the top of the Defender in white, then what color should the wheels be and what is the look in the feel versus if you do the top of the Defender in a dark color or a body color. So I'm just kind of giving you all of that perspective. And then definitely I'll talk about paint because uh, I've really been promoting Enzo a lot. And uh, well, I guess I have, but what's amazing is so many people online, uh, the, the various other uh, Instagram profiles are sharing pictures of Enzo, so it seems like everywhere I go I'm seeing it, which is really cool. Um, my point with the color, it's willow green, but I've had a number of people ask me about the color, and one of the things that we do in the bespoke process is we offer our clients the opportunity to do a bespoke paint color. And if one of the phones go dead, I can't see it. So let me check it out. I actually think I got the Instagram problem fixed, but anyway. So one of the things that we do with our clients with the bespoke paint color is we give them an option for a bespoke paint color. In, in other words, we custom create the color like we did on Enzo. It's willow green is where we start, but once we do that custom color, we don't do it again. And then the beautiful point of it is that you won't see another Defender like it, like that color. Because we're adding additional metallic, we're doing a different base coat. Uh, we're just tweaking it and making it a little different. Is what we do. So when I say bespoke, custom built, I really mean it. All right, so the configurator, I really have nothing to show you on that at this time, but it's coming. So what I want to do with custom interior, I'm going to start out with the various seat styles. That's what, I'm, and what I mean seat styles, I'm going to take you to a website, and there's two websites, two companies that we use in England. The first one is uh, Ruskin Design, and then the second one is Exmoor. Exmoor is the one that a lot of people know about, but uh, they're exclusively land. So, I'm going to pull up that website. I'm going to show you what I mean by seat style. So, I, you won't have to look at me anymore. So, here we go. But hold on, I'm going to turn the stereo down. All right, let me grab the computer and go from here and show you what I mean by seat styles. All right, so the first site, um, Exmoor is gonna be the site that we're gonna go to. And I'm gonna start, I'm gonna go through the various things and we're gonna talk about that. And then let me pull up one more website which I don't know if you guys know this, but I'll show you in just a minute what I mean on that. All right, so let me check the camera and make sure that you guys can see this. Yes, you can. Um, the first style, the first element of picking your interior is picking what type of seats do you want. So you'll see the one, this Elite Sports Seat, and uh, this is a seat option. So in the messages that I put on Instagram, I talked about all of the various choices that there's you know, over 30,000 choices and that's combinations. Well, seat choice is a little limited. So here's the first seat, but it will start to come together in a minute. And then here's the seats. So you have the various options with these seats. For example, what color do you want the stitching? 
Do you want black leather? Do you want chestnut? And we're, I'm gonna show you some different interior colors in a minute. But this is much more of a racing style seat with the holes in it. Um, comfort wise, they're pretty comfortable. You know, that uh, the one thing is the seat pan is a little thinner, meaning that the support isn't as great in your butt right here, but it really does cradle you basically. This style of seat is good for an average sized person. If you are a large guy, and I don't mean overweight, but if you are overweight, but if you're just a large guy or a large gal, this seat not so comfortable because of the side bolsters. When it comes to seating, interior or seating and the Defender, you get heated seating. I mean, that's the first thing. You do not get air conditioned seating. You do not get adjustable seats, meaning that you adjust, uh, you know, the bottom and all of this stuff. Your adjustment is right here on the side where you can tilt it forwards, you can tilt it backwards. Here's your manual bar here on the front where you pull it up and you slide it backwards and you slide it forwards. That's the level of adjustment. There is some of the seats that have a lumbar support but that lumbar support is done with a uh, pressure, uh, pressure bulb, much like you would expect to see in a, uh, what would you call it? Like a, uh, a blood pressure cuff is what it is. And you've probably seen that in some of my pictures, but that's it. There is no manual lumbar. There is no air conditioned seating. It's heated and you can tilt, it, tilt the top part forwards, backwards, and you can slide it forwards and backwards for your height. And that's it, you're done. So no more, but again, you can decide your interior color. Let me click through some different ones here. You can decide if you want a back a, or actually a diamond stitch and you have a couple different options in diamond stitch based on the seats. You can have a diamond stitch where the diamonds are pointing up and down like this, or you can have a diamond stitch where they point sideways. So here's a diamond stitch pattern. And keep in mind, you could do a contrast color. You can decide whatever leather color you want and go from there. And then move into the next one. Here's some tan ones. Again, this one has diamond stitch. And then here's the little bulb that I'm talking about. This is for the lumbar support is what that is for. Okay, and then... Um All right, I was reading some of the notes, sorry. Um, so in the seats, keep in mind what happens with these seats right here. Again, this is the bar right here to slide it forwards and backwards. But right under here, it's all metal and it's, it has a metal pan, it has springs. But what you, have to, what you do on both of the seats is you pull the seat base up on the driver's side, that's to be able to get to your battery. And on the passenger side, it's just to be able to get to the seat box where you can store additional things. So in the Defenders, you do have storage under the seats. The only thing is on the driver's side, your storage would be with a battery. So you have to be wise of what you store with your battery. All right, so there's that option. Let's see what, how this one's any different. All right, this one has no diamond stitch and it's tan. And then they have a picture here of the black with the white stitch with a more modern steering wheel. It looks to be a Momo. Um, you know, it's a nice interior. It's a simple interior. So anyway, again, the first thing is you decide your seats. This is the first set of seats. Now let me go back. So that's your option on those. Let's allow that. And then here's your typical Defender seats. This is just your regular old Defender seats. I mean, this is what you see in a lot of different uh, trucks. And I mean, you can do whatever covering you want to do. You can see right here, for example, you can choose the option. You can go bespoke leather. You can go regular black leather. Whenever you do bespoke leather, it takes much, much longer to be able to do it. But with bespoke leather, you can decide anything and everything 
of what you want. The color of the leather, do you want Alcantara, do you want tweed, what color stitches do you want? And I'm being mauled by my dogs right now, so sorry. Hope they don't knock the phones over. All right, let's scoot down. Let's see what kind of pictures they got here. So there's the typical defender seat with a diamond stitch. Notice that the diamonds are pointing up and down. Let's see what they got here. Just another view of them. Another view. And they are black. It's just a warm lighting is what it is. It's just a close-up. So there we go. And we got Fido in the back. All right. So, uh, so that's another seating option. Here's another seat option. This is the elite seat. And this is the seats that you actually see in Enzo, the D130. So again, we have various options. You've got the diamond pattern white stitching, but again, you can decide anything and everything you want to decide on these seats. So here's a little different pattern. Notice how they did it differently. So notice the stitching here, and then let's go to the picture here. Notice how the center is different. See the center and the stitching? So again, let me go back, let me just show you. Notice how the back is a full back right here a full pillow, let's call it that. And then here, the diamond is just down the middle. So again, a lot of various options here. This is in the cloth seats with the Land Rover logo on it. Um, let's see, what do we got here? This again is into the, this is a vinyl fabric mix. And you see the little bulb for the lumbar, lumbar support on that. Uh, straight out, just black leather vinyl and cloth, gray, and then just a different pattern. All right, so that's option two. So we had the racing bucket seats, and then we have, with the holes in the back, and then we have the elite seat. So let's go back. You guys could see right now, I am being crushed by these dogs. So here's a modular seat. Um, modular seat is another option. It's just a simple design. The modular seat though, does give you an option for a different seat pan. So if you want a, pan, a seat pan that comes out a little farther, if you're taller and you want more support under your hamstrings, you can do that. So this is an option and I'll just show you a, couple, a different color here. And there's into the tan. So it's just a clean, simple seat. So there we go. All right, let's go. Um, let me make sure I didn't miss some. All right, here we go. There. Here's the Puma Premium. This is the seat, not this pattern, but this design of this seat. Puma Premium is what you see in the majority of defenders that we're building. A majority of defenders that everybody's building to be honest and this seat has just been around for a long time but again you you have options you can do this is the tweed with the leather there's various different types of tweed a lot of different colors of tweed and you can do the tweed in a, a number of different ways so you can take this seat option like if you're doing this you could have a take the tweed and the leather and you could do that on your door panels you could do this on your rear seats. You could do this on your, uh, you know, I, well, I wouldn't say on the dash, but on the dash, you can decide, do you just want leather or do you want tweed? I would say go with the leather. It's going to be more durable. So this is the Harris tweed version, and uh, it does have the lumbar. Leo, did you stop? All right. When Leo wants to cuddle, there's nothing you can do about it. You just have to like, okay, all right, we'll cuddle. All right, so there's the Harris Tweed. Let's see what we got there, if there's anything else we want to see in this picture. Of course, you guys can always go to this website and see. Uh, center Cubby, I didn't mention that. So designing your interior, you'll see, for example, on Elizabeth, the green D110 that I have, that I have the diamond stitch on the seats, 
but I kept it simpler on the center cubby. There's no diamond stitch on the center cubby. So th this is the type of option that you can do. But I did do diamond stitch on the bottom of the door panels and uh, just kept it clean on the top, meaning I just went with the chestnut leather interior. All right, let's see if they got any more options in here of design, so, yep. All right, so let me go back, let me show you the other version of the Pumas. And I'm gonna get into the back seats here in just a second, the rear. Yep, here's the Puma Premium. This is probably gonna give you a better indication without the Harris Tweed. The Harris Tweed is definitely a premium. Um, it's about almost $2,000 more. I don't know if you guys can hear all of the snow and the stuff just pouring off of the 130 here in the garage. Anyway, so here's the Puma Premium seat. Uh, again, heated. This is a common seat, I would say. Um, we'll see it a lot. This is it with vinyl and leather, or uh, cloth and leather or vinyl, I'm not sure which. Different color. And then here's a two-tone version. Again, so you, you can do anything you want to do. You can do the centers in one color and then the bolster, the entire, see where this is red? We could do the entire bolster in a different color or we could do it just like this. So this could be like a chestnut here, and then this could be a fawn, or this could be a, you know, a black and chestnut, whatever you wanna do. So a lot of different options when it comes to seating on that. All right, let's see, is there any more pictures? No. Nope. All right, so let's go back, and let me show you seating when it gets into the second row seating. So, and here we go. There's not many options when you, when you come to a D110 or a D130 for your second row seats. Uh, you've got these seats, which is the classic high back. Uh, not a very comfortable seat, not very supportive. It's just, I mean, they're okay. They're inexpensive seats. And again, you can do it any style that you want to do, leather, vinyl, fabric, whatever you want to do. And you can do it where you have this high back on the right side and the left side and this low back in the center. Some people prefer to do that because they say, well, I want to be able to see through the rear view mirror. But really the high back, if you go with three high backs, it doesn't take up any more view than that spare tire that's hanging off the back. So it really doesn't give you much. So there's the one option is those. And then here's the premium high back. So this, these are the seats that are, are in, uh, they're in Enzo, the 130, they're in Elizabeth, they're in, uh, they're in Hayrod, my double cab D110. I just really like these seats. They're comfortable seats, they're full size seats, and you have a lot of different options. Let's click on uh, the Miami Dolphins one. Is that right, Miami Dolphins, is that their color? And so that's pretty crazy if I am correct, because I know, Nothing about football. All right, so let's see what our options are here. So on this, I generally don't do three seats in the back because I don't need to carry so many people. Actually, I don't really carry anybody. I carry Leo, Lucy, and Christy, and that's about it. Leo's my dog, Lucy's my dog. So anyway, so you can do three across. Or you could do one on either side and do a center cubby. And that's the way I always do my personal builds. So again, you can decide diamond stitch, no diamond stitch. It's just showing you the different views. These are not heated, by the way. You can make them heated, There's, but they don't come heated. It's an additional cost. So they will fold forwards, but the thing is, when you fold it forwards, there is not enough, um, uh, what is it? There's not a, closer to the, the Jacksonville Jag, to Jaguars. Okay, there we go. Yeah, I know nothing about sports. But anyway, when you fold them forwards, there's not enough room from where they're sitting to clear the seats in the front. So they will not fold flat, but they will fold forwards. 
All right, let's click. All right, so there's that. Let's click back. You, again, you can decide diamond stitch, no diamond stitch. And let's go this, see if they show any more styles. I'm just trying to find without the diamond stitch because I know some of you guys don't care for the diamond stitch. Nope, nothing. Okay. All right, let's go back. Let's look at our second row options, moving down. Uh, there's the Puma style here, which I will tell you are torture racks. They are so uncomfortable. The frames look chintzy. I know I'm saying that about Exmoor. We use them a lot, but it's just important that you know that they are not comfortable seats. Um, they're just not. So if you're in the States and you have a Defender and you want to redo your interior, the company you would go to would be Rovers North. You're not able, you're not, they have an exclusive agreement with Exmoor so Exmoor will not sell to anyone in the States. All right, let's see. We'll do that. All right, so that's, that's really about your options is the uncomfortable seats or uh, for the second row. I'm sorry, I'm being mulled, guys. load area, the cargo area. And uh, so your options here, again, limited. You do have a two-man bench, and the two-man bench does have seat belts. And then you have buckets. So these are center-facing. I don't know if they show the forward-facing. So here's the inward-facing buckets that you can do too. So you can do four of these. And again, all of your cargo seats do have seat belts. So let's see, do they show any various pictures? It's just a simple design. This is the way it folds up out of the way. So the bench is gonna allow you more room in your cargo area. So if you don't really have passengers that often, I say go with the bench, don't do the buckets. One. One reason is it gives you more cargo area with the bench versus these, these buckets because the seat pan of the bucket sticks out farther into the cargo area. Also, when you want to fold them up and fold them out of the way, you have two benches versus four buckets, so it's a quicker process. Um, and then when you drive with them like this a lot, the leather gets a crease or the vinyl or the fabric. So I would say, you know, ideally you would want to have those not folded up unless you don't mind the crease in the leather, if that doesn't bother you. And then, so that's it. So you really have to decide how often are you going to have people in the back? And if it's not very often, don't spend the extra money for the buckets. Uh, just get the benches. And you can do leather in the front and vinyl in the back if you want to, but I say, you know, just, if you're going to do it, just go all out and go ahead and do it. It's, it's not that much more. I mean, when, in the scope of things, it's not. So that's how that is. So, and that's your cargo area. So that's, that's really the extent of it. But again, you can match your rear seats to your front seats for the diamond stitch pattern or not diamond stitch pattern and the color of your stitching. Um, that's about it. Not many choices when it comes to that. So let me show you this now. So if you want to do forward facing seats in your D90 or in your D110, yes, that's possible. These seats are a little heavy, but easy enough to do. And these are your forward facing options. So what it is, is this is in the cargo area in the cargo floor and it folds up to the side out of the way over the top of the wheel well. So let's click into some more pictures. So you can see how it's folding up to the side towards the cargo window. And this is where it's folded down. And yes, you can forward, fold these all the way forward. If you're in a D110 space behind these, if you were to do the, this is for your third row in a D110. And then, uh, 
your space, you probably have about a foot behind the seat in a D110. And a D90, you can put these two seats in the cargo area and that's it. So if you want forward facing seats in a D90, then your only option is a four seater. That's it. Um, I don't really know if you can put child seats in there because I don't want to say because if you do and there's something wrong, I don't know. But anyway, but this is a fold and lock series, forward facing. If you don't have extra passengers that often, then I would say don't spend the extra money. These are expensive. They're a pain to mount. Uh, they do have seat belts, as you can see. But if you need them, then you need them. I mean, that's as simple as that. All right, so, and I'm going to show you seating configurations in just a second. All right, so Steve asked about the vintage. Would you stop, Lucy? Sorry, guys. It's WrestleMania now. Hopefully you can still see. Dogs. I think they're like kids, right? All right. All right, let me see. Uh, do they have any? So, um, vintage seats. Uh, that was the one that I showed. That's kind of, that's basically your vintage style seating is these here. So Steve was asking about that. Um, you can also too, just so you know, in a D90 or a D110, you don't have to do two buckets. You can do two buckets and then a low center seat. So you can put three people in the front of a D90 or a D110, but I will tell you, it is not comfortable at all because when you're shifting gears, you're elbowing your center passenger. There's just not enough room. And they're having to straddle the tunnel and everything else. But hey, it's an option. If you need it, it's there. So, uh, and there's the front center seat with the headrest. So, all right. All right, let me show you here. Let's go over to Helderberg's website now. Hey, question, have you guys been in the store? <coughs> this popped up. So I figured I would show you the store really quick, of course. Um, coasters, clocks, we did get some more clocks in, so it's probably time for you guys to get a clock, wouldn't you say? I just love these clocks. And we have more hats on the way, so there we go. All right, but anyway, let's go into this. There's a lot of information on the website. You can go to the website right here, and then under the FAQs at the very top, you'll see FAQs. Can you drive a Defender daily where I give you a lot of information? There's a ton of videos on the website. And then I have seating configurations. So you can go to this section of the website and you're able to really see what is a D90, what is a D110 seating configuration and how can you set it up. A D130 is the same as a D110 when it comes to seating configuration. So let's just kind of take a look at this real quick. On the left, we have our D90 seating layout. This is the way you'll see like the Puma autobiography on the website that I built for me. I only did a two seater because I wanted room in the back for shotgun, for dogs and all that. And those wheel wells make a really nice area to be able to put stuff and store stuff. And there's even shelving units. There's so many options. And that's what I love about the fenders is they're just so customizable and there's so many suppliers for them. All right, the next section down for the D90 is you can do two forward facing seats. Uh, this is not a good representation because there is not enough room here to put a center cubby and uh, there's not enough room to really do anything at all. So the way your passenger comes in and gets into the seat with the center cubby is they can come in through the passenger side or the driver's side door and climb. It's not easy. So let me tell you, it is not an easy task. Or they can come into the rear door and then tilt the one seat up out of the way, sit down, and then your other passenger comes in and then kind of stands in front of the seat and then tilts it down and then can sit down. It's not an easy process with forward facing seats in a D90, it's just not. Because again, the wheel wells take up the area and that's what we're dealing with. So these seats are almost touching. 
The next point of a D90 is here's the buckets. So you've got the four buckets back here, the two buckets up here. Again, you can put another center seat here, but I wouldn't recommend it. But forward, the center facing buckets are an option. The way your passenger gets in, much easier. Through the rear door, they sit down. If it's four adults, their knees will be touching, just so you know. And that's what happens with the buckets. You don't get a lot of leg room when they're buckets. So if they're adults, your better option is to go with the bench seats because the bench seats provide more room, more leg room, because then the person can scoot back a little farther and then the seating for the butts. So if you got somebody with big butts, go with the bench seats because you definitely have more butt room when it comes to the bench seats. And again, everything has seat belts. You definitely have more options when it comes to a D110. Uh, D110, you can have six forward facing or you can do seven forward facing because you could put a th another one right here, which I have an another option. So you could have forward face right here on the right hand side, making sure you guys on Instagram can see that. Okay, good. And then right here, here's your eight seat layout. This is the layout that I do a lot of times, except I do a four seat layout. I don't put the ones in the back because I don't need seats in the back, so why spend the money? And then moving down to the eight seat with benches, because again, these are the flip up buckets, the center cubbies, forward facing, and then your, your benches here, and then here's your option here where you have a nine seat layout. So with this nine seat layout, just imagine if you did two forward facing that would be in the cargo area, that would give you your seven seat option, which is right here. So this option right here, when those seats are mounted, they are almost touching. So again, the way the person or your individuals in the very, in the third row, the way they get in is they come in through the back door and then the one seat has to be tipped up they sit down in the one seat, then the passenger, next passenger comes in, hovers in front of the seat, and then the passenger here would help them tip that seat down. So that's the way the seating layout works. All right, so with that, I think that gives you a lot of info. Let's take a look at interiors now. So I'm gonna march you guys over here. All right, let me get it adjusted. I put some light here for you guys. All right. Um, you'll notice on the table, I have a couple leathers, big leather swatches, which is for the door panels. And uh, let me just tilt that down a little bit. Hopefully you guys can see that okay. So now if you have questions, definitely ask your questions because I can see what you're saying. But let me show you interior. So the first thing that you'll see, and you notice the Helderberg clock, by the way, wonderful clock. Is that the sales pitch or what, guys? That it's made from a body panel of a Land Rover. And then it has the clock mechanism. And we did all the etching to it. That's a laser etch of a Defender, of course. So there you go. But anyway, you can get this on the website. Right now we have the 15% off coupon. So go do that. You need a clock, all right. So let me move this out of the way. All right, so option wise. So when someone orders a Defender, when we do the bespoke process, they get a welcome kit, they get a box, and it, this is one of the boxes that comes. And it has the leather swatches. So starting with that. So this is uh, your first option of leather. And what it is, is that it's, it's a textured leather. So you have all the different colors in here. This is an Angora, birch, soft white. I'm not gonna go through all of them, just so we know, okay? Maple, light stone beige, but this is a textured feeling. Alpaca, let me try to tilt it a little bit. Maybe you can see the texture. But you see, you have all of these different options of colors 
to pick from. What about a bergamot? Rosemary, thyme, moss. So this is your first option. That's kind of a cool blue. Egyptian blue. That is pretty cool. And then, uh, let me move this light real quick. Figure this will let you see the colors it's a little better. This option, so we have this one that has the texture, and this one is the smooth version of the leather. So the smooth version, which I'm going to show you this one, and if you go to the website, go to Heldeberg, I'm going to, you'll be able to see what I'm going to show you here in just a second. Fawn. This is a beautiful color. So here's the thing. When you're looking at the interior here, it always looks much darker on the swatch than when it actually gets on the truck. So let me say that again where that makes sense. I'm switching sides here. But when you're looking at the swatch, it looks much, much darker than what it really is. So Fawn, go to the website and look for the D110 named Baird. So Baird is chorus gray with a white top and white wheels. And the interior is fawn. And it looks so much lighter in person because it looks darker here than what it actually does. So let me show, I'm gonna show you an example of what I mean. Mink is a really cool color. But let's go to the color that, to really give you an idea. A lot of different colors. Okay, chestnut. So chestnut is the color that's on Elizabeth. It's the color that's on Winston. See how dark it looks? It looks really dark. But when you look at the interior, it's not that dark. So let me go here. Mocha is a cool color. And then chocolate. Look how dark chocolate looks. That's a really dark looking leather. But watch here, because on the table behind you, behind this, this is chocolate. So again, look at it here on the swatch. It looks dark. It's the same color. So whenever you, basically, swatch looks darker. You get a big piece of leather like this. When you put it on the seats and the door cards, it just lightens it up. All right, so there's that, that leather. And now let me show you some other colors. So this is a color, this is exclusively from Ruskin, is what this is. So we have vintage thatch. This is a color that you see often, that you'll see, um, for example, like Arconic does it a lot, and I think East Coast Defender does it quite a bit. So this is vintage thatch. It's supposed to have that aged look to it. So whenever you do the Ruskin variation, you, it's, this is all Exmoor here on the table. Ruskin is a much smaller company. Well, I don't, I'm, let me rephrase that. I don't know if they're a much smaller company. Let's just say they're more exclusive. But whenever you do Ruskin, the price of the leather goes up about 50% more, if not 60% more. So when you go to do an interior, for example, like the chestnut interior that I did in Elizabeth, that interior is about, uh, right now, about $21,000 option. But if you were to go with this, you would have to add, for a D110, you would add about another roughly $16,000 is what it would be, depending on what you want to do. Don't hold me to that because, you know, depending on what you want to do with door cards, uh, there's a lot of different options. So this is the vintage thatch. There's a color in here I really do like a lot. Let me find it. And it's, where is it? What do you guys think about this color? 
I'm not saying this is the one I'm trying to show you that I like a lot. I mean, I do like it. There's one in here that actually has, is that the one? Vintage, no. Here it is. I like this one a lot. This would be such a classy, cool color. And it is vintage woodland. So I like that one a lot. It's just a nice green tone, but keep in mind, once it goes on the truck, it's gonna be much lighter than what it is here. So that's seats. That's we talked all about seats and door cards, door panels, dash. That's what we decide here. Um, the next option too is, for example, the stitching. This one, I went with a, a vanilla color stitch with the chocolate leather. And then this one's just a black stitch with black leather. But your next option is deciding if you're, if you're doing a soft top, you have options of different color tops, any color you can think of. If you're doing a hard top, then this is where we decide on the headliner, the window surrounds, and the sun visors. So, yes, you heard me correct that uh, whenever you do Ruskin, the price is substantially more. So anyway, um, Ruskin, is an ex it's, they're just expensive. I mean, to give you an idea, when I do, uh, and you'll see most of my builds, the vast majority of them, the dash is covered in leather, the dash, and, dash top and the sides. That job right there just to do the dash top and the sides is right at $4,000. So it's expensive to go with Ruskin. All right, so the next thing is headliner, window surrounds, sun visors. And you have colors here. So on this one here, cocoa, or I mean coffee, this is what I did in Enzo the D130. I have the coffee with the chocolate interior. Let's put that down here, Move the match. So you can see it's darker, it has a little bit of contrast. Cocoa, mid-brown, that's an option. If you look at Winston, the D90 that's in chorus gray, this is what Winston is. It has its chestnut interior. Chestnut interior. And then cocoa is what we did. And again, I'm going to say it one more time to you guys. Whatever color you see on the swatches, same goes for this. It's always lighter. So that's what we did. And the, the color is just like beautiful. It's just the way it pops is beautiful. So a lot of times, I mean, people will, I mean, on other builds, they'll go with the Alston, the black, but it just makes the cabin so dark. And uh, John says it looks fabulous. Thank you, John. But it just makes it dark. The Stornway is dark enough when it's in there. Uh, the silver light gray is nice. But it just depends on what you like. And hey, Rod, my double cab D110, I went with all black. And that wasn't because I really wanted to. It's just I wanted to get the truck done. And with everything that was going on, that was the interior I had laying around. So that's what I did. Anyway, so that's options for headliners, sun visors, and window surrounds. So with that, any questions, guys? So the sky is the limit, so you can imagine why is there so many various choices, and that's because when you're doing the seats, you can decide, do you want tweed? Do you want a secondary color leather in the seats? Do you, what color stitching do you want? What style seat do you want? I showed you, you know, four different style of front seats. And then, uh, so it's just, the sky's the limit. So first question, um, what's approximately the time frame from start to finish once a truck is in your possession? Um, on, a D, on a D90, about eight to 10 months. On a D110, we are about 12 to, I'm going to say 12 to 14 months. And on a D130, it's about a year. So that's what happens. Uh, next week, 
uh, Fred asks, he says, you, you know every detail regarding the construction of the Defender. Have you ever thought of starting a new factory assembly plant in the U.S.? And the answer is yes. Um, we, early on, I was working on assembling them in the States. And um, it just didn't work out so well. The reason being is... Um, Basically, I, I couldn't find uh, I couldn't find the staff, the people that. Let me go over here. Snow fell off. So anyway, I, I couldn't find the right team of individuals that really understood Land Rover Defenders and that they were really passionate about it. Um, that was the first concern. Um, and it went for everything, for the paintwork, the aligning, the, the doing the lines and the body panels. But the biggest reason why it doesn't make sense to do it in the States is because it was costing so much more of it, I was having to pass that cost on. And uh, because the parts are coming from England. So if I'm getting the parts in England and then having to transport or ship them here, I'm paying all the additional shipping fees, and then there's just such a big delay on the parts versus where we're at right now, because we're in England and we're right in the, basically the Mecca, the, the center hub, where you know all of our providers are within two hours of us. So it just makes sense. So if we're working on something and you know, part of the bespoke process, we'll be in the middle of the build. Like this evening, I was talking to a client, talking to Eric. And I called him and I said, hey, you know, thinking about your build, I'd really like to do some different wheels than the wheels that you originally thought of. And he's like, oh, okay, cool, let's do it. So I'm able to have those wheels and those tires within two days versus shipping it here and paying all the shipping fees, which right now, shipping is taking a very long time. So there's the answer to that. Uh, I don't know why I sat down other than I've been running all night. So. Need those. So there you go. Uh, I love what John said. Uh, John said, less is more. Just because you can doesn't mean you should. So true. Um, yeah, and I've seen some trucks that are definitely overdone. So there we go. Uh, Michael says, it would be great to see some options to customize the box under the front seats for storage, locking, etc. Yeah, I can definitely do that. You can also, there is... Yes, you can uh, put their storage options under the seat. I'll get you some pictures for that so you can really see that. All right. All right, and then uh, Cane Corso. Yes, Cane Corsos, Italian Mastiffs. That's what Leo and Lucy are. Love them. And then what's it? Is the spring event. Oh, by the way, guys, spring event. Don't forget, mark your calendar. We're going to open up a registration very soon. It's going to be June 18th through the 20th. And it is a, uh, so 18th, 19th, and 20th. So come on out, you bring your tent, set up your tent, bring your camper. Um, or if you are not the camping type, you can stay in a hotel, the American Hotel in Sharon Springs. Again, it's the American Hotel, but I will tell you, call them now and uh, book a room because they filled up last time and they will definitely fill up this time since we've had a tremendous amount of people saying, I am coming. All right, guys, what other questions do you have? I hope I helped you with interior, but the sky's the limit. There's so many options. And, uh, and that's, that's what I love about the Defenders is doing the build process and coming up with all the various options. Ah. Uh, so, have I seen some teak flooring options out there? Boat bike, I have, definitely. And uh, we are actually going to do that on John's build. And uh, so, there is options. There's even kits out there. So, whether you want to do teak or mahogany or pine or, or whatever it is. Um, so, definitely research that and put a, you know, time into that. I've got a carpenter, but, uh, yeah. But, so... You know, if you like it, cool. Um, it just wouldn't work for me. For example, look at the mess. With the D-130, look at all that water. But anyway, 
Uh, it wouldn't work for me because that's what I do is I go out, I, I play in the snow, I, I drive in the rain, and it will definitely fill up with water and then it just, the wood gets all messed up in there. So anyway, so that's what that is. All right, so any other questions, guys? Again, mark your calendar, June 18th through the 20th here on the farm in Sharon Springs, New York. Uh, the last one we had in October, we had, uh, you know, we had people from all over. We had people from California, from Ohio, from Pennsylvania, New Jersey. I mean, it was just, it was everywhere. So come on out. It'll be a lot of fun. But, you know, you don't have to wait until then. As um, soon as we get through this little COVID thing, we've been on a, uh, what is it called? Uh, lost my train of thought there. Is a, what is it called? Lockdown. I can't even think of what it's called. It's all this COVID stuff, but we won't go into that. All right. So question is, are there any other seat brands? Yes, there is. There's another company called, uh, it's made, they're made in Germany, and they're called uh, Shin Man, I believe is what it is. But uh, that's an option. They make some really nice, comfortable seats. So that's about it. I mean, there's really, there's Exmoor, and Exmoor doesn't make the seats. They just do the leather. And, uh, but did you know you can put Mazda yeah, the pandemic, I can't even think what it is. Quarantine. We were on quarantine is what it was. That was what I was trying to say. But anyway, um, you can put Mazda RX, RX-8 seats in a Defender with a little bit of modification, if that's what you want to do. I like more of the classic look. All right, so there you go. Uh, the grill. Uh, and hey, Rod, somebody asked me that. That is a custom-made grill made in Germany. So there you go. Um, any other questions, guys? All right, I'm going to pan. Ooh, look at that color. That's a Havana Gray Pearl. So, beautiful color. All right, guys. So, if that's... Give you one more thing. Any other questions? Anything else? Anything else? You should work with Xmall to come up with your round seating design bespoke to you. Oh, Xmore. Yes. That is a, that's a good plan. Um, so, the one company that made in Germany company, a Shin Man or whatever it's called, uh, they've been offering to send us some seats. And I might take them up on that. There's some pretty cool seats. They seem to be really dominant in the G-Wagon market is where they seem to be. But, uh, yeah. So, custom designs that we do have, keep in mind we have the new brakes now, so we have the big, huge, massive Villa aluminum calipers. That uh, so it's uh, basically sports car braking with cross drilled rotors. That's our newest that we have. We have our own custom exhaust too. So anyway, so there you go. All right, guys. With that, I am going to go eat dinner. That's what I'm going to do, and um, go from there. But thank you. Um, it was a lovely time. I'm going to share. I wish I could do this on Facebook. But let me see if I got any cool pictures that I could share with you guys of the drive. I'm going through the pictures right now. There we go. So there's some pictures from the drive of what we were doing. Beautiful little creek. So anyway, so that's what we did, we had some fun. All right, guys. Um, so, one more question. Um, it, do we have a soft top option for the D130? Yes. You can do a soft top on the rear. You see where the tire's at? You can do a soft top there. You can take the top off completely and do a soft top. This is the truck over here that you see often with the soft top. And this is a double cab, oh, D110. Oh, I almost hit the wrong button. Uh, so anyway, so yeah, you can do the soft top on the D110 double cab, or you can do a soft top on a D110 station wagon, basically, or a soft top on the D130. So anyway, I hope that helps you guys. If you have any questions, hey, I'm always looking for ideas to talk about on Sunday night, so send them my way. And I appreciate it. appreciate you hanging out with me for a Sunday night. But uh, other than that, thank you guys and have a wonderful night.